Hey, what's happening? YouTubers are back with a brand new action figure review. And today we're going to take a look at the new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Wonder Woman based on her appearance in the Flashpoint comics. Now this Wonder Woman figure is a gold label collection exclusive and exclusive domestically to Targets in the States. I'm not sure how it works internationally, but she is the fourth and final piece needed for that collective build cyborg wave that's part of like their year long program they do with Target. They've been doing it for the past couple years. But before we jump ahead, like we always do with the view though, let's get started with the box art first. So it's your standard McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Collect the Build Wave box. So it's a little bit wider than most DC Multiverse boxes. And one of the things I noticed instantly was that the card is now in the clamshell in the front, as you can see right here, where in most cases it's either like stuck behind the cardboard or in front of the cardboard with an adhesive and you just have to peel it off. That's interesting to see in the clamshell. I'm wondering how it's going to be like taking it out of the clamshell packaging because more times than not, it tends to bend when you remove it from the cardboard when the adhesive attached to it, but we'll see. So in the top left corner, you see that McFarlane gold label collection tag, making this worth $8,000. <laughs> then on the bottom of the box, you see the standard DC Multiverse logo, Wonder Woman underneath, and to the right, you see the collect to build cyborg. Then on the right side of the box, you see the DC Multiverse logo at the top. The character is Wonder Woman, based on her appearance in Flashpoint. And then on the bottom, you see the McFarlane Toys logo. And then flipping around to the back of the box, you see the image artwork of Cyborg. And to the left of him, you see the pieces needed to complete the figure. This one says it comes with a head and shoulder pads, but it looks like from the clamshell, it's only the head it actually comes with, so that's interesting. And then on the bottom right-hand side of the box, you see the four figures needed to complete Cyborg. You have Aquaman, Project Superman, Flash, and Wonder Woman. Out of the four of these, I only picked up Flash, because I needed a classic Flash and Wonder Woman. I do regret not picking up Project Superman and Aquaman because I did see them at clearance at one point at all my targets. Damn. <laughs> That's enough about the box art. Right, let's go and get Wonder Woman out of the box. All right, here's Wonder Woman out of the box. Let's take a look at the accessories first. So first things first, she comes with a DC base plate that you see with all McFarlane Toys figures. So the collectibility piece she comes with is a head sculpt of Cyborg and Damn, looking at this really makes me regret not picking up the other two figures in the wave. She does come with one weapon accessory and it's her sword. And much like I mentioned in my Dark Knights of Steel Batman review for the sword on that one, this one looks fantastic. Like the sculpting work, like the worn down look on the sword and the paint application on the handle. This just looks fantastic. I hope, like I said in that review going forward, they do more stuff like this with the sword, pay much more attention to this. Because as you saw in my previous review, that Donna Troy sword looked awful. With all due respects, <laughs> but this looks fantastic. Just like all DC Multiverse figures from McFarlane Toys, she comes with a data file card, so you see the image artwork of Wonder Woman in her appearance in Flashpoint, and on the back of the card is the data file. Feel free to pause it if you want to go ahead and read it. All right, now let's take a look at the figure itself, and we get started with the head sculpt first, and I do like the finish and the sculpting work of the helmet. I like the sort of like worn down, beaten look, like it looks really awesome. In terms of the expression, I guess when comparing it to the source material, like it could have had a little bit more paint work done to the eyes because I don't think her eyes stand out as much as they should. It's like they could have used a little bit more white in there because it just looks like she has blacked out eyes. <laughs> but yeah, when comparing it to this source material, it looks like the, the, the helmet could have used a little bit more like gold as opposed to this looks kind of like, like a bronze or like copper tone. But I still like the sculpting work of it. The paint could have been a little bit lighter in my opinion. When looking at the back, you can see the hair sculpts coming out of the helmet, which looks cool, and that shouldn't hinder any of the movement, I don't think. Nah, yeah, it should be fine. Take a look at the rest of the figure. The sculpting work does look great throughout the rest of the actual sculpt. I do like the chainmail underneath, and the cool thing is the silver armor does stand out. It does look like actual armor, where we've seen in the past, like that medieval spawn, they molded the plastic in gray and it just looks really dull. Whereas this definitely stands out, especially under the right lighting, it could really pop for toy photography shots. Another thing that pops is the red in her armor, which looks awesome. And just to elaborate more on the armor, I do like this like beaten down, worn down look on it. Like she's been in a couple wars, like this looks fantastic. Throughout the rest of the other silver parts of her armor, it just looks amazing in my opinion. The only thing is it looks like they're using a rubber overlay for the torso. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I don't know if y'all see my review for the Endless Winter Wonder Woman that came out almost a year ago or over a year, I should say. But if you articulate the torso too much, the problem is like if you bend it too much, it's going to have crease marks in there, which 
over time will suck. I just wish they would have found a way to make this a solid piece and then use a ball joint at the hip to kind of do that just because I get that they're doing this so you get more range, but a solid torso would have been better in my opinion just because it won't have that crease over time that's gonna show right there. And I, that's something that just stands out to me. But let me know in the comments below, would you prefer a soft rubber overlay or a solid torso in this, in this instance, I guess. All right, now it's gonna jump right into size comparisons. And first size comparison, here's Flashpoint Wonder Woman standing next to a couple other Wonder Woman figures in the DC Multiverse line from McFarlane Toys. We have the Last Knight on Earth Wonder Woman on the left and the Dark Knight's Death Metal Wonder Woman on the right. And I might get some flack for this, but I don't care. I actually like this Last Night on Earth Wonder Woman. I think she looks badass. And I know it got a lot of flack because people at the time wanted a classic Wonder Woman. Well, fast forward to this year, we're gonna get that classic Wonder Woman. I think it's gonna release later on this month. I think on the 21st or 23rd, whatever. But let me know which version of Wonder Woman do you prefer? I kind of like Last Night on Earth and this new Flashpoint one. I do want to do a head swap between these two, but I'm gonna to get to that in a little bit. And next size comparison here is Flashpoint Wonder Woman sitting next to the Donna Troy figure from the Collectibilt Beast Boy Wave and the Todd McFarlane designed Wonder Woman on the right, which is another head swap I do want to try here in a second. All right, so the first head swap I wanted to try is from the Todd McFarlane designed Wonder Woman uh, gold label version. And I think this design works. Uh, it kind of gives like this Valkyrie design vibe but I like it a lot. And the cool thing is the gold on her crown kind of matches the gold that's on the torso piece. And the silvers do look like they kind of blend in well. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And real quick, I just wanted to show that the aesthetic and design of the Flashpoint Wonder Woman actually goes well with the design and aesthetic of the Todd McFarlane inspired Wonder Woman. It's one of those rare cases where the head swap works out for both figures. But I think this looks pretty cool. Let me know what you all think. Next size comparison here is Flashpoint Wonder Woman sitting next to a couple of Batman figures we've gotten this year, which have been some of my favorites and I think will look well on the shelf aesthetically in my opinion. We have the Gladiator Batman on the left, which I reviewed earlier this year, and we have the recently reviewed Dark Knights of Steel Batman on the right, which I really like. Feel free to check out that review, but I think aesthetically these two are going to look real well together. Next size comparison here is Flashpoint Wonder Woman sitting next to a couple of monstrosities and cell shading. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but not really. <laughs> Anyways, here she is standing next to the recently reissued McFarlane Toys DC Direct Batman the Animated Series figures with new cell shading. <laughs> we have Robin on the left and Batman on the right. And last and final size comparison, because I haven't done this in a very long ass time, but because you can't see them on the big screen anymore, you can still see them in my reviews. Here she is standing next to the Black Adam movie figure on the throne with a custom soft goods cape that a very special person made for me. And on the right, we have the Target exclusive Justice League Snyder Cut version Superman, which, by the way, did y'all catch that restock on this figure? I don't know if they found a container ship filled with all these Superman figures, but for anyone that wanted one, I hope you were able to get one. All right, some overall thoughts on the figure. I like it a lot. Apart from a few things I would have changed, like the head sculpt, specifically the eyes, I wish they would have painted a little bit better. Uh, like for reference, see the OG DC Direct version. That one came out fantastic. I kind of wish they would have taken that same approach when it comes to this head sculpt. And then also the rubber overlay. I don't know how it could have done a little bit differently, but I wish they would have found a different way instead of doing making a rubber overlay just because, look, I'll be honest with y'all. Most of the time my figures are standing in vanilla poses on my shelf. But occasionally I do like to dabble in toy photography, thus causing me to pose the figures and putting them in dynamic poses, thus adding crease marks and stress marks on that rubber overlay. So over time, you're going to see a lot of stress marks and crease marks, which won't look good aesthetically. But that's just me. And in terms of like the character selection, like I'm excited that we're getting a classic Wonder Woman. I understand fans' passion for that. That's great. On the flip side, I think I'm in the minority when I say this, but I actually like it when they take this approach and do other variations of beloved characters like Wonder Woman or Batman or Superman just because we haven't ever seen these before in figure form. I mean, don't get <laughs> this one actually we did see in DC Direct, but we never got a Last Night on Earth Wonder Woman or a Dark Knight's Death Metal version and or an updated Flashpoint Wonder Woman, but I like when they do this. Let me know though, what you think in the comments below. YouTubers, are you going to be picking this up? Sound off in the comments below and like always, if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like button. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.